Thanks, Arlene. Good afternoon. Accident and emergency admissions have fallen off a cliff. April admissions were the lowest since records began in 2010 and less than half what they were in April last year. Admissions to hospital after accident and emergency were down almost 40% on the same time last year. The figures do not come accompanied by any explanation but were greeted by doctors with huge concern. A ticking time bomb, one called them, with the fear being that many people with serious medical conditions are now not seeking urgently needed medical attention. Neil Dixon is the Chief Executive of the NHS Confederation, which represents groups that commission and provide NHS services. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Can I get, first of all, your reaction, your immediate reaction to these astonishing figures? Well, we were certainly aware from our members they were presiding over uh, hospitals that are emptier, a lot emptier than they'd anticipated, and of course accident emergency departments that were reporting that they were seeing about half the number of patients that they did. A number of appeals have gone out to the public saying the NHS is still open for business. But I think the reality is that for, first of all, in a good way, people are deciding this isn't so serious, so I will call 111 or I will go online. And undoubtedly, there are people who go to accident emergency departments who probably don't need that care. But there's no doubt also, just by the sheer volume of these figures, apart from anything else, there are people who needed treatment and who have chosen not to, either because they didn't want to bother the NHS, fearing that their presence might make it more difficult, or because they were frightened they might contract covid if they turned up an accident emergency. So the message we have to send out really clearly going forward is the NHS is open for business. NHS can treat you safely. They have separate bits for COVID and non-COVID. And we certainly want to see people who are needing urgent treatment then the right place to go is accident emergency. If it's not urgent, if it is, oh, I've had a pain in my leg for the last six months and it's really annoying me at the moment, that's not, that's not a reason to uh, go to your accident emergency department. And it never was, frankly. And it isn't right that people should do that. But if it is an urgent issue, and I think the worry is particularly around things like strokes, um, where people have any kind of worry about that kind of thing, they should be seeking urgent help or or indeed heart attacks. And the worry is that people may have had these incidents, they may have sort of got through them but not had treatment. And that means next time around, it'll be more serious, as it were, for them. Uh, And it means that the NHS will have a backlog of people who are more seriously ill as a result than they would have been. There's clearly concern in a significant proportion of the population simply about going outside into crowded places, let alone going into hospitals, which they wrongly, it seems, view as places of potential transmission. How do you persuade them that hospitals are safe to go to? I think it's a wider question, frankly, than that, Johnny. I mean, it is that question, of course, but it is also the wider question about how we move from a situation where people, funnily enough, have felt a degree of protection by being at home. Uh, They may not have liked it and lots of people want to go out, but there's also now probably levels of fear about how do I go out and it, getting out of all this is more difficult than going into it and I think we're all recognizing that and that applies to the NHS as well because the big challenge for the health service is gearing up now not just getting A&Es back into ordinary business which we really do want to do to attract those patients but there's also a, a very big backlog of people who have not had treatment, not had uh, screening tests and so forth. And we need to gear that up at the same time as keeping a COVID operation. We're still in a level four emergency. We're still doing an awful lot of stuff that we didn't, we wouldn't normally have to do. So it's combining those two things is going to be a real challenge for us. So I think the behavioral scientists are probably better at answering that (laughs) other question than I am. But I do think we need to send out the simple message. The NHS is there for you. It is great if people, um, if you need to dial 999, if you think there's any danger that you might be having a heart attack or one of your relatives. The other thing is about children. I think there's been big concern among pediatricians and children departments 
generally around the absence of children coming for treatment. So parents, again, you need to bring children along if you are concerned about them. And obviously, you know, where it's not immediate, as it were, then go to your GP, speak to your GP yeah. and try and get, even if it's an online consultation. Thanks, Neil. Neil Dixon from the NHS Confederation. Well,